Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I mean over the top beautiful spring day here in paradise in the uh, collapse of global industrial civilization here in this undisclosed swamp on the planet where we are in this beautiful, where are we, Thursday, March 4th. 2021 uh, so <coughs> I need to get out there and plant some azalea bushes and some marigolds uh, and take the little dog on a walk on this beautiful day before I do uh, I want to thank several alert tribes members sending me finally some hopium that your old doomer can get behind uh, hallelujah we finally have some apocaloptimism that uh, I can celebrate. Uh, we will see if it ever happens or not. So uh, you've probably seen this story, many versions of it in the mainstream media. I'm just pulling one. This is from wherever the Telegraph, I think the Telegraph is from London. All right, and you heard it first here. Genetically modified humans could curb growing population of people. Hallelujah. Mutant humans genetically modified to spread in infertility genes could be released to into civilization to tackle the burgeoning population of humans, the University of Edinburgh has said. All right, three cheers for the University of Edinburgh. <clears throat> I guess this is the, uh, the British Department of the Environment is currently looking at options for controlling humans with coals and oral contraceptives being considered. Now the University of Edinburgh has suggested that genetically altering humans so they pass on infer infertility genes could dramatically cut populations in a new study published in the journal Scientific Reports, researchers found that releasing just 100 muta genetically mutated humans into a population of 3,000 would wipe out that population within 15 years. Unbelievable. We just need to get... Uh, 100 genetically modified humans for every 3,000, what is that, one for every 30, I don't know, I, I guess there's a lot of, uh, they say a few of the men get all the girls, anyway, and we won't go there. You might have heard of this, uh, this is called gene drive. I've been wondering what this gene drive, you, this will be a major a term for the collapse uh, gene drive. The technique is known as a gene drive and has already been successfully used to dramatically lower populations of mosquitoes to prevent malaria and Zika. It works by preventing natural selection from weeding out harmful traits like infertility, essentially driving an unhelpful mutation through a population. Scientists insert the new genetic code using a process called CRISPR. I'm sure you've heard this term CRISPR before. CRISPR, which is essentially molecular scissors which snip away parts of the DNA and replace it with new code. 
Nikki Faber, one of the researchers from the University of Edinburgh, told the uh, Telegraph, for humans, we have done the first step, which is computer modeling. The modeling shows that our gene drive is very effective at reducing the human population size. The next step is currently being done in which a, dream, a gene drive is tested for efficiency in a human cell line in vitro in the lab. This does not involve any actual humans. There are many more steps of testing to be done after that, so a gene drive is a very promising strategy to control humans, but we have still got a long way to go before the technology can be used. And of course, this is where the cold water gets thrown on it. This is just one more uh, apocalyptic uh, hopium. Currently, the most advanced gene drive projects are in insects, close quote. <clears throat> in January, Environment Minister Lord Goldsmith, Lord Go Goldsmith said that breeding infertility into humans could provide a, quote, longer term and more humane way of reducing human numbers. The Royal Forestry Society is currently calling for a human cull and is also funding research into contraception, but experts said a gene drive could offer a new solution. Commenting on the new study, Professor Luke Alfie, a group leader in uh, anthropod genetics at the Pitbright Institute said, quote, invasive species such as humans are a major problem for biodiversity and conservation. In many cases, there are no adequate methods for control. Most of the work on gene drives has focused on mosquitoes. This study is unusual in focusing on a vertebrate, the human, though there has also been an interest in targeting invasive populations of mice and rats on islands. Regulatory approval and public acceptance of the idea would obviously be essential before any actual use of this technology. That is a long way off, but this paper indicates that gene drives could be a valuable tool in the conservation toolbox. Close quote. Um, the authors say the gene drive technique has not yet been tested in live humans and further research is needed to ensure that an abrupt suppression of the human population does not have a damaging impact on the ecosystem as a whole. I cannot imagine why an abrupt suppression of the human population would have a damaging impact on the ecosystem as a whole. Maybe they're talking about, uh, you know, all of those nuclear reactors that would not have any more humans to keep them from blowing up. I don't know. I can't think of any other possible reason. There are also concerns that a large-scale release of humans in an environment which already has too many humans may lead to starvation or mass migration of the population spreading the problem of humans even further. Good Lord, we don't need that. 
the new technique combines three types of gene drive, including one which limits how long the effects last for in case of unexpected impacts, otherwise known as unintended consequences. I can't imagine what an unintended consequence of, uh, of this could be, uh, of uh, releasing genetically modified humans uh, in, into the environment. Uh, and new mutated humans would need to be added over time to continue the suppressive effect the researchers said. Dr. Tony Nolan, senior lecturer at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine added, quote, demonstration of its practical feasibility would be a significant milestone. In the meantime, studies like this are useful for informing conversation about the relative merits of gene drive for controlling humans and more broadly as a potential new conservation tool to protect endangered species, close quote. Writing in the journal, the author said, quote, <clears throat> we're just going to finish up with this quote from the uh, study itself, quote, without intervention, Yes, uh, <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, where was I? Current control methods, current control methods such as shooting, trapping, and poisoning humans are inhumane, labor intensive, we can't have that, expensive, and ineffective in dealing with the scope of the problem in most situations. Although there are still technical challenges, CRISPR-based gene drives may offer a humane, efficient, species-specific, and cost-effective method for controlling invasive species, including the human, close quote. So uh, finally, we have some uh, finally uh, some sensible thinking uh, about how to control the single most invasive species on this planet, uh, soon to be the most invasive species in this solar system. Good, good Lord, uh, we need the genetically uh, modified humans uh, to nip this little problem in the bud uh, before we take this little problem that we've created off planet. But anyway, I'm going, e even though I know this is never going to happen and, and, and that these little human rights snowflakes are, you know, are going to start squawking about this. Uh, I, I, I can just hear it now. I, I'm just going to rest in the rosy glow of, uh, of, of my hopium rush, just thinking what a beautiful day it could be on the planet. Anyway, guys, and I want to thank everyone for sending me this story to brighten my day, and I hope and I uh, hope I have brightened your day. But with that, since I did not take the little dog on a walk yesterday, we're gonna get out there and enjoy this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day on the planet while we still can. And I highly advise you. To do the same. Bye guys.